Welcome to another episode of these short bite-sized nuggets of CPD designed to help you develop your teaching practice. Teaching principle number five, scaffolding and chunking material. Scaffolds are temporary supports that are gradually withdrawn over time so that students can manage the material on their own. A scaffold is also termed as guided practice. So this is where a teacher will set the students off on a task or a particular skill, but instead of leaving them to completely practice that in independence, they're given lots of guidance along the way, so they're nudged and, if you like, steered towards mastery and excellence of that particular skill or process. It's also um, called modelling and it comes in many different forms so scaffolding and chunking is nothing revolutionary or particularly new it will look like a lot of things that you already do in the classroom I'm just going to use this visual description or analogy to explain a little bit more about what scaffolding actually is so take for example these two images the image on the right there where you have a, sh uh, a small garden fence, clearly scaffolding won't be needed to build such a small structure because the challenge isn't sufficient to warrant that. However, on the left, the large apartment block, in order to erect something uh, so vast, scaffolds will be needed in order to support that level of challenge. So. It's important to consider whether there is actually sufficient challenge and whether the task merits any scaffolding. Because if scaffolds are put in place and the task isn't sufficiently challenging, it can actually have uh, an adverse effect where you're dumbing students down and giving them support that they don't actually require. To use another analogy, it's like teaching a child to ride a bike. At first, the child would need training wheels or um, stabilizers, and then eventually as they become more proficient and more confident, they begin to ride with two wheels only. So consider scaffolding and chunking material as having a similar process where you're, you're guiding students towards more independence and greater levels of challenge. A few key questions to pause at and just consider. The first question here is pertinent because it's important to understand what really uh, needs scaffolding for students. As I referred to earlier, if the level of challenge isn't there and scaffolds are put in place, then it's unnecessary. But if we don't preempt what students will find difficult when they get to that material, it can demotivate students and students can left feeling uh, a little bit deflated because they haven't got the necessary building blocks or followed the steps in order to get to the more challenging material. Secondly, it's also important to think about what the challenging concepts and processes or skills are to be taught. So then you can start to think about where the scaffolds are actually needed. I'm going to use a really concrete example of how I have scaffolded and chunked material in the past as an English teacher. I always think it's important to start with the end in mind. So for example, I would want students to get to an A-star comparative poetry essay. And that's a really challenging task because you're dealing with different uh, pieces of literature. So you're having to juggle different ideas in the mind, but also being able to compare and look at similarities and differences is a skill some students find quite difficult. So I would work backwards, think about where I want them to get to and what are the necessary steps to put in place? So firstly, I would introduce um, one poem and we would go through that in sufficient depth, through questioning, various activities, just to 
really understand the themes of the poem and what it's about and look at some of the literary devices and appreciate the poem. Once I'm certain that students have understood just the one poem, so we haven't introduced any comparison yet, I would then bring in the second poem. And I would follow the same steps in getting students to understand the first poem as I would for the second. So then I would start to build in layers of comparison. We'll look at, okay, what's similar between these poems and what's different. And if it's maybe an A-level class and they are required to compare more pieces of literature, I would then layer in the third poem. So that's chunking material. I've seen instances where three poems are given at once and students are expected to just pick out the similarities and differences. Ultimately, that is what students will need to do in the exam. But as a teacher, you would fold in those various layers in order to then build up to the Holy Grail. Um, well, the desired outcome, which is my A-star comparative poetry essay. So how can you implement this in your own practice? Firstly, I think this is really important to think of small wins and the easy wins. So instead of trying to overhaul your practice entirely, just choose one particular class to focus, focus on and make that your, your lesson study. As I alluded to earlier, it's also important to think about, and perhaps do this with your colleagues, what concepts do you think students are going to struggle with in this particular unit? Finally, having ownership over your class and real knowledge of that particular class that you've chosen. For that particular class, what is an appropriate level of challenge? And then you can start to think about where the scaffolds will be required. I hope this very, very short burst of CPD has been useful and you can then begin to start to think about where you will require scaffolds and uh, material to be chunked in, in bite-sized pieces for your students, for them to eventually master that really challenging content so they can practice those things independently and achieve great levels of success. If you would like any more information or any more explanations, please leave um, some comments in the comment section and I promise to get back to you.